Tears of Mithril. Scales of Justice, read by Enitos, Part 2, Collaboration. This was another rooftop. The sun was high in the sky, and the city below was bustling. The air was thick with heat and the sounds of business. A smell of fresh fish was coming up from the docks, and many voices were mingled together on the street below. Derville Anith sat on her haunches and looked at the crowd below. In her hand she held tight to her new short bow. It was sturdy, intricately colored, and curved back on itself where the string held tight. It seemed to almost vibrate with anticipation for the hunt. She had knocked an arrow onto it and was poised, ready to draw. Her blue frock coat seemed very much to blend in with the sky above her, and had anyone below even known to look up, they would have made out very little of her. Her long, red hair was tied back, and her dark breeches and boots were well hidden behind the parapet of the roof. On the street below, Elvin Ranley, a tall man with short blonde hair, was striding down the street. His long, berry red coat hung down, unbuttoned to reveal his white shirt and breeches beneath. At his waist, his sword hung in its sheath. He waved to the merchants and businessmen as he passed by, loudly inviting the time of day and comments about the weather. They, in turn, acknowledged him, and in some cases greeted him cheerfully. He rounded on one stall in particular. The table was laid out with boxes and trays of bright stones that glistened in the sunlight. The man behind it all was broad. His long, black beard was thick and curly, so that the dark face behind it was hard to make out in full. He smiled at Elvin. Good morning, Lieutenant. How may I help you? His voice was deep and friendly. Hello, Ahmed. Just browsing, really. Elvin smiled back. How's business? The same as it has been for months, my friend. Everyone is browsing, but no one is buying. Several other people were gathered around the stall and did not seem to take kindly to this remark. Elvin laughed, though. Perhaps I could help with that. Elvin smiled. I am looking for something for my friend. It is nearly her birthday. For Deville, Ahmed stroked his beard thoughtfully. She never struck me as wearing many jewels. Perhaps not, but still, I need to find something for her. She is very discerning, and I do not think that the fishmongers across the way could offer anything better. Elvin winked. What do you think? This last remark was addressed to another man who was also looking at the gems and jewels of Ahmed's market stand. The man visibly started to have been spoken to directly. He turned to look at Elvin and dropped a small green bauble he had been holding back into a box on the table. He rallied himself, though, and focused. For whom is this? he stammered. For my friend, Elvin continued to smile. She's quite pale, and tends to dress in blues and browns. Maybe something green. An emerald, perhaps, to compliment them? Or, then again, with hair as red as hers? Perhaps a ruby to match? The one you have in your pocket looked to be about the right color. The man froze. His eyes darted back and forth between Elvin and Ahmed. The tone of Elvin's voice dropped, and his face became far more serious. Montu er atum, by the authority of the Council of Alexia, I hereby arrest you in the name of the Empire of Kanaan. If you come quietly and answer all questions when asked, you may be able to... His words trailed off, and he sighed, for Montu had turned on the spot and made to run away. Stop! he called after. Gasps erupted from the crowd around them as Montu began to pick up speed, only to come to an immediate halt as an arrow hit the ground directly in front of him. He looked up to try and see where it had come from, but, hearing Elvin coming up behind, turned and ran back the other way. Derville 
jumped to her feet and began running across the rooftops, keeping Montu in her sight as she went. Elvin was charging through the streets behind him, keeping a short distance behind, but always keeping up. Derville stopped and aimed again as Montu made to turn down an alleyway. Another carefully placed shot, and the man doubled around and arced the other way. Elvin looked up and smiled. Running high and low, the pair continued to guide and chase, until suddenly, and without warning, Montu stopped and glowered at Elvin. His eyes burned with fear and fury as he then looked up to spot Derville. Rounding on a nearby street vendor, he seemed to grab at the panoply of food on the stall. A look of victory was on his face, though, as he turned back, holding a large pot lid like a shield. Elvin began to approach, but Montu bit the air at him, his eyes darting back and forth between Elvin and Derville. He began to back towards a side street, but when neither seemed to react, he quickly hopped and switched direction. As Montu ran across the street, Derville loosed another arrow down. The man laughed with delight as it hit squarely in the center of the lid, which he threw down to the ground before gleefully running down the opposite alley. Derville cursed under her breath and shouted down to Elvin, He's going the wrong way! Elvin beckoned to her and she hurriedly made her way down, jumping from rooftop to canopy to ground. That path doubles back. We can still get him, Elvin was saying as she ran to meet him. You take this way, I'll take that. Derville nodded, and the two of them ran to separate entrances. Careful of potential missiles, they each darted from cover to cover until they both rounded and saw him climbing a wall at the far end. As they approached, though, Montu kicked at the already flimsy woodwork that had allowed him to climb, and... With a creak and a crash, an aging vine lattice fell at the feet of the two pursuers. Derville drew another arrow and made to loose it, but Elvin held up a hand quickly and signaled for her to lower it. Alive, he said. That is what they said. But he's getting away! At the top of the wall, Montu waved to the two of them and laughed as he dropped down to the other side. He was in the middle of a storage yard, and there was a nice busy street up ahead, perfect for getting lost in. Just then, he felt a finger tap him on the shoulder. Suddenly tensing again, he turned to see an enormous man leaning up against the wall. The figure was dressed in heavy plate armor, and had a great sword strapped across his back. Ducky Repton, cell sword, stood upright and grinned. Yo nicked, mate. The huge man growled. Montu's mouth gaped. Ducky's fist came down. And then... Darkness. Tales of Mithrim are written by Jimmy Clefay. Mithrim is a fantasy world built for the dungeon room role-playing game system. To find out more about the world of Mithrim, or to try out the game, go to www.mithrim.com.